What is a research problem? Why do we need to identify research problems in our research projects? And what is the process of identifying research problems? These are the questions that we will respond to in this presentation. So first, what is a research problem? A research problem is actually an issue or a difficulty in our in our understanding related to particular topics or in terms of responding to actions as practitioners. So these problems or these difficulties in, in our actions encourage us or compel us or lead us to conduct the process of research in order to aid to our understanding of those issues or to improve our practices. So, if the basic aim of the research process is to actually understand concepts, then the research problems will revolve around the development of or understanding of the basic theories related to a particular field or a particular topic. And so such type of researches with such type of research problems will be, uh, will be considered as basic or theory focused or descriptive researches or in some cases correlational researches or causal or experimental researches. On the other hand, research problems that refer to uh, difficulties in terms of our actions or in terms of applying theory into practice, such research problems will come in the fold of researches that, are, that we call applied researches or practice focused researches such as action research is an example in the social science research field. Now, the what, uh, the what of the research problem so there are certain questions that can help us focus the research problem that we are that, uh, for which we are conducting the research. So these questions are what issue is being explored? The second question is what is the background of the issue? Thirdly, what is the importance of the issue? And fourthly, why is the issue being explored? Or in other words, uh, what is the rationale or what is in what ways exploring the particular issue will actually help us um, in understanding the issue in a better way. So the research problem, uh, we, will, we will actually understand the research problem better if we can respond to these fundamental questions. The second question related to research problem is the why question. In other words, why is it that we need to understand the concept of a research problem in the context of, of, of our research? So um, we need to have a research problem or a research issue in our research studies because this process helps us in rationalizing the research process. Um, Secondly, it directs the research process. So we need some direction in order to conduct useful research. And uh, the identification of a clear uh, and precise research problem will actually help us in directing our research process in the, des in the desirable direction. Further, the identification of a good research problem helps us in our research design considerations. In other words, our research design considerations will be in response to uh, our understanding of our research problem. And the last one is that it helps um, the, the process of focusing uh, our research process or, 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 or research project. Now the how of it, uh, which is actually the last question in order to understand the research problem properly is that what is the process of identifying and presenting a good research problem? 
Well, so there are certain, uh, certain steps that we need, need to take in order to um, properly develop a good research, identify and develop a good research problem. The first one is the identification and analysis of a broad area of academic research, academic or research and trust. So generally, we have certain fields in which we conduct research and those fields are broad, broader fields such as, let's say, teacher education is a broader field, psychology is a broader field, certain aspects of sociology um, is a broader field and within those fields there are certain areas that we want to um, focus our research on. So the first thing is we need to identify the broader fields or areas in which we want to conduct the research. This will then lead to the identification, the process of identifying a gap of areas. The gap could be in theoretical terms or it could be in practical terms. So as um, as I said earlier, sometimes we are interested in exploring and furthering theories related to a particular field, but in some cases we are interested in the practical solution to certain problems. Um, and for th both of these things, we will need to identify research gaps. That actually means that we need to study and we need to critically read and analyze and that will actually lead to research gap identification within the broader areas and so this will be a process of focusing. Then consolidation of the gap area. So once the gap areas identif are identified, the next thing is to read further, to further critically analyze, to discuss with seniors and supervisors in order to consolidate and to make sure that the gap areas are areas that need to be filled through the process of research. And the last one is the rationalization or justification of further exploration or research. So our research gap should be substantial because we are actually committing time and resources to explore a particular research area or sub area and that is why we should uh, properly rationalize and justify the research, um, the gap area or the problem area that we want to explore further. So here is an example of how we actually, how we can present our research problem. Um, is a statement. So basically a research problem then, although it comes out of our research questions and our search and our uh, theoretical um, understanding and our readings and our reflections and analysis, but then it needs to be presented in the form of a statement. So here you can see that in this particular statement, there's a background given to it, then there is a rationalization um, for like why do we need to conduct this study and then coming to the to, to the study and justifying it for further exploration so for example if if I just read this the introductory part reflective practice has been an important educational concept employed in many educational programs across disciplines including teacher education Many teacher education, initial teacher education programs aim to develop prospective teachers as reflective practitioners. So here you can see that I gave a background to the concept of reflective practice in teacher education. Then, despite its ubiquity in teacher education programs, there has been little consensus regarding the connotations, aims and outcomes of reflective practice as a teacher education concept. So here I am referring to a particular issue and that is that is actually the lack of consensus regarding the, the definition and, and practical implementation of the reflective practice. Then I am giving a reason for it. So this is partly because of the multiplicity of definitional connotations that have been associated with the concept. In the absence of any comprehensive agreed upon definition, the concept has often been turned into a slogan lacking clearly laid out 
aims, implementation mechanisms, and measurable outcomes. So here I'm giving some more details related to the issue. And towards in the last paragraph, you can see that I'm now consolidating this, this rationalization for this research problem. So the current study therefore aims to explore reflective practice in terms of its aims, implementation mechanisms, and measurable outcomes, if any, in teacher education programs. The study also aims to explore possible ways and means of the incorporation of reflective practice in teacher education programs with clearer aims, implementation mechanisms, and outcomes. So overall, you can see that I gave a background to the research issue, which is actually exploring the, the connotation and implementation of reflection or reflective practice in teacher education. Then I gave the gap areas or why this study is needed and towards the end, um, in what specific situation um, and under what specific aims this particular study would be conducted. So that's an example of a research problem statement or how to precisely present a research problem.